Hello and welcome back to Core Finance in association with the Next Exchange. It gives me great pleasure to introduce onto the show today Andrew O'Brien, who is CEO and founder of Goodbox. Now, you're unlisted at the moment. Can right. you explain to our viewers what your company is and, and what you do there and, and, and what you're trying to achieve? Certainly, yeah. So we are a, uh, I suppose, a maturing startup uh, focused solely on the fundraising space. So what we do is, uh, and I, I wish it could have been kind of a eureka moment of an idea, mm -hmm. but this was a very methodical approach where the fundraising space, we found that it's heavily under-innovated, uh, not a lot of competition, and we don't see many of these big companies focusing on it. So we thought, well, why don't we focus on building solutions specifically for the fundraising space rather than what they've been experiencing to date, which is adaptations from very successful products, uh, mm -hmm. very well suited to other sectors, but not to their sector. So. Our flagship product is Goodbox, that's the mm -hmm. name, and uh, it is a contactless uh, fundraising box aimed to uh, replace the cash coin boxes that you might see, for example, on a countertop in a, in a store or... And this, uh, this is fundraising for charities? Fundraising for charities, okay. however, uh, we are looking at the uh, crowdfunding space as well, where individuals, we believe mm -hmm. that people give money to causes, uh, and causes can be hosted by both charities and individuals. So for us, uh, the idea that as opposed to traditional bulky kind of 1990 style looking mobile terminals, which are mm -hmm. very good for concluding a transaction, we had to build something bespoke for the charity and fundraising space, which is excellent when it comes to encouraging or catalyzing that impulse to do good. Uh, and the good box is, uh, I suppose, the outcome of, of our collective thought. Mm -hmm. And this is a, a standalone box sitting a, on, a, on a counter or bar, is, is, is that the way it is? Precisely. Well, I mean, there, there are many faces to fundraising, so we mm -hmm. do try to give it uh, different casings. The good box, uh, again, which is our uh, first launch product, uh, it is a countertop unit. So we looked at the countertops, very tight for space. Mm -hmm. um, and we had to, to, to maximize the viewability or the visibility of the units. Uh, to whoever might be passing by, thus we have five and a half inch HD screens. Mm -hmm. These screens are directly controlled by the charities via the Goodbox cloud. So if you were to imagine a state of a thousand good boxes, mm -hmm. uh, which we're in conversations with a couple of charities over, uh, how can you monitor them if you're a charity? They're not cheap, they're not like a two pound cash coin box or a plastic thing. They do have uh, value. Mm -hmm. So we had to look at these things, which for example, a traditional terminal in a Tesco, for example, uh, if that's switched off or not working, you could be sure that they'll know about it because they won't be able to fulfill uh, uh, purchases mm -hmm. uh, for any of the visitors or shoppers to visit. So uh, for us, we have to look at this remote monitoring. If one switches off, thousands of units across the country, and one of these charities may have no idea that it's not working, we send them a notification saying it's not working. If there is a... Uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, one goes roaming or mm -hmm. maybe you know, disappears from where it's supposed to be. Uh, they receive a notification saying that the unit's gone walkabouts uh, and then they can track it live time with a map. So different small things which traditional terminals can't do, which this will need to do. Uh, and it all starts with catalyzing that reason to donate. Mm -hmm. And um, with regards to you mentioned uh, a, few, a few charities that you're associated with, uh, have you actually signed some deals with, with any big charities thus far? Yeah, so, so we've been in talks with, uh, so we've got about 180 charities on the waiting list. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't, I think we tested some Google ads recently, we spent maybe 80 pounds on that just to see how it works, but beyond that uh, we have done no marketing. So mm -hmm. this has been purely through word of mouth. Uh, we're engaged with 40 museums, uh, five of them being in the top seven in the UK in mm -hmm. terms of uh, visitor count. Uh, we are engaged uh, in trials with one major religious institution in the UK mm -hmm. uh, with a view to potentially winning a national contract, and we are hopeful. Uh, and then we're engaged with two other religious institutions as well, uh, and, and those would be in quantities of 500 locations each. So we, we feel like the progress has been good. We're, all, we're also talking with um, uh, 15 hospitals uh, and a few other places, seven different countries of inquiries, including one government from the Middle East, uh, looking to standardize their fundraising processes. So uh, we feel fortunate to be where we are today. Um, mm -hmm. My previous job, I was selling uh, things that anyone else could have quite easily sold. It's a real pleasure to be able to sell something which people really want and can make a difference. 
And um, Goodbox itself, uh, are you a, a not-for-profit organization? I mean, that, that's uh, we are, a key uh, question. We right? are a for-profit organization. Um, the, the, there are two key reasons for this. One, um, if I want to attract the best talent mm -hmm. uh, to, to work with me, I'm, I'm talking top talent, developers, uh, hardware engineers, uh, then I want to be able to uh, incentivize them accordingly. Mm -hmm. uh, the output is a better product or a better platform. Uh, so I'm a strong advocate of the for-profit uh, presence in this space. A great example being uh, Just Giving, uh, mm -hmm. where they're obviously specifically platform-based. Uh, they have a 73% market share, uh, despite other not-for-profits uh, surfacing and trying to compete uh, for that market share. And th there has to be a uh, reason behind such a high market share. I mean, I don't think 73% is sustainable in any sector. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, we'll see if it's sustainable in the, in the not-for-profit sector. But certainly a for-profit status, uh, we're clear about what we're doing. Um, we are, you know, uh, looking at tight margins uh, and scale and volume. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so we believe the pricing is very clear and fair. Uh, and the for-profit for us we felt that was the best way to take it. And um, moving on from fundraising for charities, obviously there's a lot of technology you need to get the personnel and, and to do that there's capital expenditure. You, you need funds to do that. Any startup needs cash. Um, True. So where are you at at the moment with regards to raising capital to, to get this business going? So uh, we closed our seed round last year mm -hmm. uh, and that was for circa £1 million. Uh, we've secured a uh, debt or loan facility uh, for an additional £4 million. Mm -hmm. And we just launched on the Cedars crowdfunding platform. We felt that this is quite a, not necessarily a direct consumer facing thing. We do what we are technically B2B2C. B2 uh, but we did feel that there could be a consumer element uh, to this. And uh, I suppose inviting the public to be a part of this journey, uh, we felt that there was a uh, substance to that. Uh, so we are raising £2.4 million on Cedars. Um, mm -hmm. I think at last count we're about 54% covered. We only launched yesterday morning, so uh, it's still early doors. Yeah, doing but, well uh, though so far. Well, he's doing county chickens, but um, <laughs> so far, so good. Mm -hmm. um, and we are working a few leads as well. Good, and um, one assumes when, when you get the personnel and you have the technology, would you be looking beyond the, the collection boxes themselves, the digital contactless co um, boxes? Certainly there must be other applications beyond just collecting for charity. So I'd say there's two different sets of applications which I could um, uh, uh, answer your question by. One is within the charity space. Mm -hmm. So uh, our, our target is to become the first omni-channel or multi-channel uh, full-stack solutions provided to charities. One sign-up gets you platform access, it gets you uh, purchase or rentals of our units. So we understand that a lot of charities have one big day a year. They don't want to buy a thousand boxes and let them sit gathering dust in a cupboard. Mm -hmm. Rather, what they would do is rent them, we take care of the delivery, they receive them with all of the imagery and all of the videos or whatever they want on the screens uh, pre-uploaded. They go out do their fundraising, we collect them the next day or a couple of days later. So uh, uh, very much for us, the full stack where they can do one sign up into Goodbox, and we mm -hmm. are um, uh, an FCA registered payment institution, uh, and we w we're in the process of becoming a payment facilitator, which effectively means we can sign up yes. uh, these charities and remit directly to them as well. Um, through that process, uh, offering them a full stack gives us this opportunity to do really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm talking on uh, at the gateway level, for example, uh, gift aid solutions where uh, we are currently in discussions with HMRC mm -hmm. uh, to potentially roll out, I wouldn't want to say it's a game changer in the gift day place, but we really hope it will be. Um, and, and then the second uh, aspect of this is to what use cases we could apply to Goodbox. There are other sectors that have approached us. You can think about what sector might want to remote monitor their units or get, for example, uh, beer dispensers. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, get a notification saying that the, 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 the beer keg is, uh, is just about to empty out or something like that where uh, a, a relationship with the unit uh, where it can feed you valuable data uh, to maximize or increase conversion uh, then the good box does have applications for that as well but I, I do want to keep the blinkers on there. <laughs> Fair enough and um, 
taking the blinkers off, let, let's look <laughs> at uh, 12 months down the line, and, and even as far out as five years, where, where would you like Goodbox to be uh, in those kind of timescales? So right now we're only focusing on the UK market. Um, however, there is a, uh, a global pull to this, um, and we've seen that through some of the unsolicited inquiries we've received uh, uh, from, I think, just about every continent now. Uh, I would caveat that contactless is big in quite a few countries, but it doesn't dominate the world. Right? Mm -hmm. you're, you're looking at Asia and you've got QR codes, which uh, uh, Alipay and, and WeChat Pay, which are so popular over there. Our units are built to evolve. I love the story of uh, a Tesla car owner going to bed and waking up the next morning. He's got a brand new dashboard because it's updated itself overnight. Our units will be running at 10% of their capacity at launch and they will be built to do that. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily a new dashboard, but <laughs> to, uh, to accept new forms of payments, alternative payments. So we are building this with a global reach in mind. Uh, so to answer your question, yes. Uh, in terms of uh, geographic expansion, it is something that we're thinking of. Um, not exactly, uh, uh, I suppose, actioning right now. In terms of where we want to be as a company, um, we, we believe that uh, being clear and honest with our customers, uh, and then their customers are the donors, mm -hmm. Uh, is of utmost importance um, uh, and a listing uh, hopefully towards the latter end of uh, 2018, early 2019 is what we're forecasting or planning to do at the moment. On that note, thank you very much for joining us. Good luck with the fundraising. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on here on Core Finance and in association with Next Exchange. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. All the best.